The Native Americans that lived here before, you know, pre Columbian Native Americans that were living in, the, living in this area, most of them did not live in the San Fernando Valley. I think there was one sad tribe that did. But uh, none of the rest of them lived in the San Fernando Valley. The western state of the coastal areas are the high ground. They called it the Valley of Smoke uh, because it smoked the campfires. It wouldn't blinker, it wouldn't have no place to go. And their enemies then would know where they were. This is a uh, pre Caucasian enemy, uh, tribe on tribe uh, activities. Now, uh, the, the white man came and fought with firearms and land grants, and that was all she wrote. So, the San Fernando Valley was a very unhealthy place to live. In the 1950s, even when this was happening to the LA Basin, though he was really much living in the San Fernando Valley, he was mainly orange groves. That get developed until later because it was such an inhospitable place for this one. It was like, okay, very cool. But uh, two guys moved in uh, or started buying a property, subdividing it, and doing that. They were Bob, Bob Oak and uh, Gene Ocker. Uh, bought up an awful lot of that land. Uh, Bob Oak, mid major comedian in the 60s, 70s, possibly the 80s. Uh, Gene Autry, uh, whose name is now on the museum near the zoo, uh, Western Heritage, is, it was probably some of the worst Western movies I've ever seen in my life. They're awful. Uh, atrocious. Anyway, but he, he and Bob Hope bought up a whole bunch of land, subdivided it, and turned the, the San Fernando Valley into the Jack in the Box network it does now. And created this kind of one version of this. Mexico City, I have to admit, a lot of their problems come from the inactive volcano. Uh, part of it is the automobiles. They have quite a few in Mexico City now. It is a huge city. Uh, largest Spanish speaking city in the world. Uh, LA is the second largest Spanish speaking city in the world. Uh, but the volcano is throwing sulfur dioxide in the air. There's not much you can really do. About, you know, pretty push control of all the Anyway, so this is LA in 1954. This is the uh, main causes of pollution. Industry, this is one of the serious causes. Agriculture is actually a serious cause of pollution. Uh, if you're growing crops, you're using a lot of nitrate based fertilizers. You're using a lot of uh, methane based. It's just uh, on the desk here somewhere on the table. I'll, I'll take care. If anytime you guys borrow tools from me, just put them on the desk, you know, so I, I can take a look at them before I put them away. That way I know that I can buy new ones. Okay, uh, the other thing with agriculture is uh, livestock. Uh, they actually study uh, methane provisions on cows. Very possibly the worst government grant ever. Uh, I don't know how they measured it, or they used to be hose, I don't know. Uh, because it turns out the cattle production actually does is a major cause of pollution from the, the, the methane, which is basically an unburned hydrocarbon. I don't think we can really burn the hydrocarbons you know, on cattle too easily without really pissing on the cow. But most of the air pollution comes from transportation, and in, in the United States especially. Uh, we looked when we looked at fuel, we saw that most of the barrel of crude oil went to gasoline through cracking. Opposition. And we all have cars here. Most of us, a lot of us have more than one motor vehicle. In a place like Southeast Asia, there'll be one family of 25 with one Honda motor scooter. They all ride at once. Uh, I've got pictures that show that. It's amazing. But here, most people have more than one vehicle. My wife and I, just the two of us, we have five motor vehicles. Now, I didn't explain out here two at a time. But still, it seems a bit excessive, doesn't it? Or three of them are motorcycles. And of course, industry. Uh, industry comes out quite a bit, although in California, not as much as it does in some of the rest of the country. Uh, we use very little coal in our, in our production. Our major pollution issues in the industry in California are groundwater problems caused by chemical processes, uh, coal plating plants, and things like that. And dry cleaners. Uh, dry cleaners are a major uh, polluter of groundwater. I guess there's an extra part of it, and they're, they're redoing it because there was a dry cleaner that 
she walks away from the lake. It was Duck Nick who gets uh, paraffins into the ground. And reached under a couple blocks, city blocks of the street, got into the Becker Park Lake. It actually was killing the lotus blossoms and the ducks. Hard to have the lotus blossom festival when you kill all the lotus blossoms. So they uh, had to dig out the lake, they had to dig down past all the chemical waste, bring in fresh dirt, and then seal up the side of the walls. It's, it, it's been dry now for almost a year and a half. Eventually they're going to be uh, flooding and bring, bringing back the ducks and turtles and all that. Yes, it is, actually. They found out when the, the place changed hands about 10 years ago, the new owners had to have an environmental impact survey. That's when they found out that the previous five owners of the place, going back to the 1920s, had been doing this. And so the current owners, you know, stopped immediately. They, they had to, but they didn't stop being. So they're, they're not responsible for it. They didn't do it. Uh, the city of Los Angeles inherited this problem from uh, basically uh, poor behavior in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. Now, sources of pollution on a motorcycle. The fuel tank is a huge source. It's on a car, too. The carburetor itself, because of the uh, gasoline and some of the smoke holes in the carburetors, the exhaust pipe is obvious. You know, the, the vehicle exhaust is coming out of that. And even the crankcase. Uh, the crankcase, you have blow bomb. That's exhaust gases, combustion gases getting past the rings, getting into the crankcase. The crankcase has to be vented to the outside air. Now these are all sources of pollution on motorcycles. Kale 100. The components of transportation exhaust is from gasoline. The good emissions come from perfect combustion. Now perfect combustion doesn't occur in real life. But perfect combustion, we start with the fuel, which is going to call HC. That's for hydrocarbon. It's probably CNH18 or CH4 or one of the alcohols, the carbon is hydrogen fuels. But it's going to say CH hydrocarbon. Combined with air, which is nitrogen and oxygen. That's air. Chemical reaction takes place during combustion. A chemical reaction occurs during combustion, which hopefully makes water, water vapor and unburned high, and uh, carbon dioxide. And nitrogen is an inert gas; it should go in and go out. And that's that's perfect combustion. I know that's not a balanced chemical equation. Chemists can balance that. So well, that's perfect, but perfection doesn't occur in real life. Instead, we get some imperfect combustion. One well, of the first ones we get is some hydrocarbons that we can never get around to use it. Let me move this whole formula over. I'm running this space. And there are some others, including sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen. The, the, these are the two big ones, carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless gas. You don't, you don't smell that, so when you smell exhaust, you're not smelling the carbon monoxide, you're smelling the hydrocarbons. And possibly some of the sulfur dioxide is that rotten thing smell. Uh, so it's getting exhaust. And if it's burning your lungs, burning your eyes, it's probably the oxides of nitrogen causing that. Uh, but carbon monoxide, you won't notice it until you just decide that this might be a pretty good place to go to sleep. Yeah, just don't wake up. 
Uh, carbon monoxide takes the place of oxygen in your blood and prevents them from exchanging thereafter, and you basically shut down. Your system just shuts down. And that's the only way to really get rid of carbon monoxide poisoning is to immerse it in a hyperbaric chamber, uh, force that out. And we have a few here because of the scuba that died in the and hyperbaric chambers, which we're normally using for removing nitrogen from the blood. This time we can use for carbon monoxide. And this assumes that they, they get to you in time. Most of the time we find out about it later. Most carbon monoxide deaths are caused by illegal garage conversions, by the way. When they take a, a garage and a house and turn it into an apartment and put in a, a heater, a gas heater, and they don't vent it properly. And there's some, or, or, or if they, it's a cold night that the occupants decide that to keep themselves warm, they'll break, break the bocce inside, you know, and you can use the charcoal to keep them warm. And the whole family goes to sleep and they will come. Uh, about once a year. There's an entire family uh, for the whole house. Anyway, this is LA today. Exhaust provides all these emissions. This is LA today. This is a big difference from this. This is LA 1954. You hardly ever see LA look like this. We may have fog. You know, you can't be having a foggy day, but this is not fog. This is fog. This is this is pollution. This is a view of LA today. You can still see some smog. And they're on the horizon, that little brown stain on the horizon. That's over, those are oxides of nitrogen along that tongue. But you can see that this is a heck of a lot better. When I first moved to Los Angeles in 1981, I could all the pass from the base and looked down at the San Fernando Valley. And I could not see the valley. I saw a map of brown atmosphere. And if I was going to go into the valley, I'd have to go through that and down beneath. And then, and after an hour or two, your eyes are burning, your throat is sore, you're short of breath. And it, the heat in the valley was just this intense, because it would reflect back and forth and reflect the, the pollution. You just knew that this was not a good place for a human being. But now I go to the same place, some Polo Pass, same overlook there on the wall, and look, look out. And I can see the valley floor. I can read the signs of the businesses down there on uh, Riverside Drive and the, uh, the Venture Boulevard. And uh, I can see the mountains on the other side. Now, there are not fewer drivers now than there were in 1980, 81, I got here. It's been 31 years I've been in LA. And so in 31 years, we have more drivers in LA and more drivers in the San Fernando Valley than ever before. The reason the air is cleaned up is because of pollution controls. So, personally, I like pollution controls. I like pollution controls. I want to see them on the vehicles. You know, uh, I'm awaiting additional pollution controls over what we've already got. Now, racing is, is a different factor. If you're racing, you do what you have to do to win a race. That may Detail to move your pollution controls for no other reason than to save the weight. If you take off all your pollution controls, you might save two or three pounds. You can also skip lunch. You can only do that. Um, you can use the bathroom not before you hit the track or something. You know, that, 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 that's a little uh, drop a pound right there. Uh, that might be better. So for this tree, First off, you're not racing on the street. You're not, not supposed to be. You're not certainly not doing any serious racing. Serious racing is done on a racetrack. And you do what you have to do to win. On the street, the streets you do using your transportation. And so leave them alone. Also, most bikes are tuned to work with the pollution controls. If you take them off, they don't run right anymore. Including the way the cylinder heads are ported and vented. Yeah, pollution controls. So, early pollution controls.